All right, we're here at the Ultimate Sports Institute in Florida. I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Spencer Barron with Neurosport Elite. Do you mind if I brag on you for a second? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Worked with the Miami Dolphins for almost 20 years, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League. So when it comes to different sorts of sports related pains, this is your guy right here. So today what we're gonna talk about is pain in the front of the shoulder. So if you got this aching pain, especially if it feels really deep, there's two different things that can cause it. One is a really simple one or simpler, which is the long head of the biceps, the tendon which usually is just tendon irritation, but there's another cause. So let's talk about that. What is that other rotator cuff muscle that can cause pain right there? This is a fun one because it's a very vague type of aggravation to the, to the tendon, which the muscle is really deep inside. But you, a patient would come in and complain about like a dull, achy pain that's deep and they're trying to locate it, but you can't put your finger on it like we did with the bicep tendon or right. supraspinatus tendon. How do we identify biceps tendon versus this other rotator cuff muscle, which is our subscapularis? You know, usually it's when a patient comes in and starts talking about how it got injured, or I usually ask, when is it at its worst? And they'll usually tell me something like an overhead pull, like a lat pull down or a seated row when they're at a most relaxed position. The other one is if it's an athlete that comes in and they're a pitcher, boom. So there's four phases of the pitching throw and make believe you're a pitcher for a moment, all right? All right. So, that's, so there's the cocking phase where you come back. Phase two is right about there. Phase three is a little bit further. And phase four is the follow through when the, everything, all the major muscles are relaxed and boom, you're now straining the subscapularis. So as far as tests, what are the tests to know if it's long head of the biceps? Uh, long, Besides being able to dig in there and feel. Yeah, long head of the bicep is, you know, you, you push against, you push against a weight or a resistance like this and you feel pain here. But one of the easiest ways for bicep tendon, and that's a recap from our other videos, is really relax the arm and if you have pain right in the front there and in a neutral position, ouch. Now if you rotate out and I jam my finger in there and it doesn't hurt, usually that's bicep tendon. Okay, so now how do we test for subscap? Ah, this is a fun one. So, have you ever eaten too much and you do this? Oh, I'm full. Now, that position and push into your stomach. Now, if you have to like favor your, your, your muscle test when you're doing that, if your arm comes out like this or you start to grimace, that's usually subscapularis test. But there's two parts of the subscapularis. That's one part. The other part of the subscapularis is if you reach back behind, like you're gonna scratch your back, and you go and to touch my hand. So if you cannot bring your hand back without pain, that's subscapularis. And where would you feel that pain? So if, let's start with the first one. If I press here, where would I typically feel that pain? Quite frankly, it varies per person. And it, the muscle is about this, the muscle sits underneath the shoulder blade. So it sits there and it passes through underneath, underneath the armpit and into the attachment in front of the shoulder. So you'll feel pain deep. Right there. Well, yeah, Sometimes. but you know what? It's deep, it's deep and it's kind of a dull discomfort. Not like, you know, infraspinatus or supraspinatus when I could put my finger right on the top of the tendon or on the bicep tendon itself. So same thing, doing this test, pressing backwards. Ouch. probably feel a deep pain somewhere in the front of the shoulder. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's interesting, the muscle, you're probably not gonna feel the muscle itself because it's tucked in there. It's on the scapula or your shoulder blade, but it's on the front side of it. So you can't feel it on the back and you can't feel it on the front, but it wraps around the front and the tendon inserts here. So a lot of times you're gonna feel the pain right in front here. Yeah, and it's it's a deep muscle. so. Most of the time people come in going, you know, I just can't put my finger on it. You know, it's deep and it only happens when I do this or when I, when I throw. So what about in the gym? What are some different movements or different exercises here in the gym 
that could aggravate or cause injury to the subscap. Now this is where we usually see it most commonly, and that is seated rowing or overhead lat pull downs or even regular lat pull downs because you're, you're really accommodating for the big thick lat that we always want to express and have that, that nice winged look. But what happens is you relax, you're going heavy and then you relax and stretch and it, essentially that feels good. But you're also relaxing those big prime movers, which like the lat, and that little ter that little subscapularis is like, you know, wondering why the, all this weight is being placed on this stretch, and that's sometimes how you strain. So you're using really big muscles like the lats to move a lot of weight, but then relaxing in that eccentric or that negative phase, and then all of a sudden putting all the pressure on this very small muscle. Perfect. That's exactly right. So let's demonstrate it real quick. So. This is not necessarily the worst or most offensive movement because you're allowing your whole body to move and normal biomechanics will allow safety to that subscapularis. But where the big problem can be is when you go ahead and strip. Yeah, that would be really bad. And that's what I see is a lot of people controlling their concentric, the squeeze, and then they have a tendency to relax and they let momentum take over. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about, relaxing those bigger muscles like the lats and all of a sudden putting all that stress and jerking yeah. on that smaller muscle. So best recommendation, not just for injury prevention, but even for building muscle, don't ignore that negative or that eccentric contraction. So control your concentric, nice isometric squeeze, and then control that negative probably is gonna lessen the risk of injury. A stretch might feel good to, to, the, to the big prime mover muscles, but now you're putting all the pressure on that little subscapularis and it's causing it to strain more, thinking that that's stretching it out. So when you're doing any of your rowing movements, this is why it's important not to go too heavy because if you can't control your negative, then you're gonna increase your risk for injury. Yeah. You had mentioned that there is another one that's even worse yeah. in the rowing movements. So you wanna yeah. go over to that one? Let's do it. Here's why this could be worse. Now you're restricting normal biomechanics or normal movement patterns. So you've got this, even though it's nice and safe to the low back, which again, this movement can be very advantageous, but the moment you release and go, ooh, let me stretch, you are making the subscapularis very vulnerable to a tear or a strain. Right here, I'm a little protected because when that weight hits the bottom, you can still see I'm pretty relaxed here. If this were to scoop back or if I were to grab higher up here, yeah. where now the weight isn't resting at the bottom and now it's exaggerating the stretch, much more vulnerable position. Absolutely. That is definitely a position that can aggravate that subscapularis because now your all your your lat is that big prime mover is relaxed and it's a nice stretch, but now you're causing pressure onto the subscap unless you keep control. Right. So maybe a, a simple thing that you can do, even if at this fully extended position you're not able to rest the weight, all you have to do is keep constant tension. So as we come back, control that eccentric, stop short. There you go. Stop short, so not only are you keeping constant tension and avoiding maybe that overstretching, you're also making your workout a whole lot harder and you're able to use a little bit lighter weight and still get that same level of intensity that you need for building muscle. Now don't get me wrong, it's a good stretch. I wouldn't do it with heavy weight. I would do a stretch as a deliberate movement, not as a, a second thought movement. You know, you can be pounding out heavy weight and then go and then let it stretch. That's when you tear. Everyone talks about full range of motion. That's become like a big thing. Oh, I gotta get full ROM. R-O-M, range of motion. <laughs> That's true to a degree. Yes, you wanna get good full range of motion, but you don't want to overstretch because that's pretty much where we injure ourselves in almost any exercise is when a muscle is overstretched. Absolutely. So we want just enough tension on a muscle to get a peak contraction, get that ideal muscle length tension relationship, but we don't want to overstretch a muscle either. If you're going heavy to build muscle, you want to 
be careful, and, and it's good to train in your strongest range. Your strongest range is not when you're fully extended, it's when you're here to here. You have all control, you're recruiting all the muscles, even the little accessory muscles. So, even in, say, a pull down, do we have the same issue, potentially? Yes. So here's what's interesting. Let's go over to a, a lap pull down. So, you tell me if this looks familiar, if you've ever seen this in the gym. Come in here, they'll jerk, using momentum, and this is what their lap pull downs look like. So you look at this position here, talk about being overly extended, especially not controlling the weight, not controlling that eccentric. So now you're taking all the tension off those bigger muscles like your lats that you're trying to work, and now you're putting all that strain on that tiny little rotator cuff muscle. So this one I think is a prime example of how people don't control their weight and really set themselves up for injury. Because it's the most common of all the lat exercises and you're involving all sorts of other shoulder muscles. We're just picking on the subscapularis right now. So proper technique. One, go a little bit lighter so you can control your eccentric or control your negative. Don't use momentum. So we don't need to lean back. Besides, if we lean back, this starts to look like a row, not a pull down. So, nice squeeze, control that eccentric, get just enough of a stretch, but stop short. Keep constant tension. Squeeze back. So now with the constant tension, you're making the workout harder, you're making your lats work harder, and again, not putting that same stress on the subscapularis. Yeah, that is probably the best way to do things. Maintain control. It is a lot harder, but it's meant to be a lot harder. And then if you're gonna stretch, make it a deliberate thing. Go a little lighter and then stretch that area out. That'll keep you safe. All right, so now we know potentially what that is. We know some of the exercises or different movements outside of the gym that can cause it. Now, as far as next steps, one thing that I think is interesting about the subscap is that this is a little bit different than the long head of the biceps or the supraspinatus. And that's why we covered those first, is because a lot of times, long head of the biceps pain here in the front or the supraspinatus, a lot of times is tendon irritation, usually a lot of times from impingement, either rubbing on something or getting pinched. Now the subscap is different. There's really nothing for it to get pinched on. So when you have subscap pain, a little more serious than just tendon irritation. So my recommendation, go see a professional. This isn't something that you're probably just gonna work out on your own. And if you keep doing what caused the problem in the first place, it's only gonna get worse. There were two words that we talked about that are interchangeable. And maybe we should be clear on a tear and a strain have different degrees or different levels. There's mild, moderate, and severe. And the best way to know that so you don't freak out and worry to yourself to the point where you don't train anymore is I'm gonna pull out my trusty little tissue paper here. It's not used, is it? Uh, no, I promise it's clean. I swear I didn't use it yet. But anyway, so a tear is a strain, but if it's mild, this is what it looks like on the muscle. It looks like little fibers that have, that have pulled apart, and that is meant to heal well, sometimes two to four weeks. But you can always work around it by using a little more discipline and control. Like James, you said it perfect, and you demonstrated exactly the way it should be. Concentrated and very no jerky movements, because that will definitely tear that area more and make a mild strain a moderate or severe strain. So think of that muscle as it comes in, you start to go from muscle to connective tissue or tendon. So what the doc is talking about is little strains to the muscle belly itself, which heal relatively easy. Yeah. As long as you don't keep doing the same thing that's irritating it. Right. But then it turns into tendon. And when you have a tear in the tendon, that's a lot more severe or serious. And that's, that's why I recommend you definitely go see a professional, have them help you diagnose what it is. This is a great opportunity to learn maybe what's causing the pain and also some of the different movements that might cause it. 
But as far as alleviating it, what can you do to maybe alleviate some of that pain? Ice is always your best bet when you're within the first 72 hours of an injury. How much ice? Maybe 10 minutes, up to 20 minutes, and you could just lay it over the top. Remember, that is deep. But here's the big deal. That muscle is, is right, on, right under there. And it's right, at the, the bulk of the muscle is deep in the armpit, right? Oh, sorry, big guy. I could take him down with just my fingers, right? And then it comes out and it attaches, this little bit attaches to the front. That's why it com comes as a dull, achy type discomfort, not a sharp pain like we talked about before. Don't mess around. Just be strict with your movements instead of jerky. As far as strengthening it, internal rotation exercises. Yes. What's, what's the best policy for strengthening that muscle to help prevent injury? You know, I love that the rubber bands that you use because you can manipulate the movements to be just so precise to that little intrinsic muscle called the subscapularis. So the same move that we showed you how to test for pain is the same move that if we had the rubber band here and forced against a resistance, internal rotation. That's your best bet. In fact, you know, if, if it does get to that point where it hurts, find where your strongest range is at. And so maybe there's resistance from here to here and it hurts. So start from here to here, which is the beauty of, of that use of rubber bands. So strengthen it within the range of motion that's comfortable, but make sure that you continue to get that range of motion because sometimes the worst thing you can do is baby it too much. Right, because then when it heals and you go back to activity, you're deconditioned, you're not as strong as you were. And so even if your non-pain range is from here to here, do, do it. That. Yeah. Cool. So check out another video that we did, which is a test for all of the different rotator cuff muscles. I think that's a really helpful video. Next, we're gonna be covering pain on the back of the shoulder. And that, just like the front of the shoulder, could be a couple different things. So we'll go through the same exact exercise, which is, you know, different movements and different tests to figure out what specifically is causing the problem, what kind of exercises in the gym and outside of the gym might be aggravating it, and then things that you can do to help alleviate it. So, Doc? My man. As always, appreciate it. Same. We'll see you next video. You bet.